Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem delete node in a binary search tree. We're given the root node of a binary search tree and a key value and we want to delete the node with the key value of course and then we want to return the new root of the tree. Maybe the root changed, maybe it didn't. That's kind of what they tell you here. It's pretty rare for leak code to give you a hint like this but you got to take what you can get and they even give you how to break down this problem. You have to search for the node that you want to remove and then remove the node. If only it were that easy though. This problem can be surprisingly tricky the first time you solve it, especially if you don't have like a deep understanding of how binary search tree operations work. But we can use the properties of BSTs to our advantage. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. We're given the root of the tree. We're given a key three in this case, we want to find it. Now, finding it is not going to be too bad. We know we can do that in log n time. Well, that's assuming the tree is balanced. It might not be balanced. So actually a more correct way to say this, we can find this using the height of the tree. That's all we're going to have to traverse. But after we find it, we also have to delete it. Finding it is easy. We just take the root value five is three greater than five. Nope. Is it less than five? Yes, it is less than five. So we search to the left and we would recursively just keep doing that until we find the value. Now, hypothetically, the key value might not even exist in the tree. In that case, we don't have to do anything. So that's pretty easy. But in this case, it does. So what do we do with the value once we have found it? Of course, we want to delete it. You might first think that, well, you got to get rid of this node and you got this pointer over here. So instead of pointing it at three, we should point it somewhere else and we have to like move these nodes around that is technically possible but if you even try to code it up this way you're going to quickly find out that it can get pretty complicated because once you get to the three you're still going to need a reference to its parent so that's going to be kind of complicated there's actually an easier way to do this it's a bit clever and that is we can replace the value of three with a different valid value we could pick any value in this tree why not pick the seven over here let's get rid of this seven maybe just delete this node and then put a seven over here. Well, there's two problems here. One, when we put a seven over here, does this still look like a binary search tree to you? Not to me because every value over here should be less than five, but that's not the case. Seven is greater than five. So that's the problem. We have to preserve the properties of a binary search tree. And second, well, if we put the seven over here, then we still have to delete a different node anyway. So how did that happen? How can we prevent that? Or maybe there's something clever that we can do. And yes, it turns out that there is something clever. First of all, what value should we replace three with? We should probably pick a value in this subtree if there's one available to us. The reason is because we know every value in this subtree is already less than five. So we are allowed to replace this value with two or four. But we really have to think through a bunch of edge cases for us to choose the most intelligent value. Let me tell you why. First of all, what would happen if this three over here actually did not have any children? Well, in that case, it would be pretty easy to delete this value because what we're going to do recursively, I'm going to tell you that we're going to solve this problem recursively because it's a lot easier to do so. What we want to do is recursively delete from this tree and then recursively delete from this tree. Once we delete from this tree, we want to return the new tree up to the parent, and then we want to return this tree just from our outermost function call. But what would we return from here once we delete three? We would return null, of course, and this null value that we're returning is what this parent is going to assign to its left child. Whatever we return from here is what's going to be assigned to the left child of Five. So basically what I'm getting at here is if three has no children, we return null. What happens if it only has one child though? What if three only has a single child too? Now this child could have some children, or it might not have children. I'm arguing to you that whether it has children or not doesn't actually matter for us because we know this itself is a binary search tree. And if we get rid of three, all we have to do is say that five's new child is two, 
which is a binary search tree. And every value here is going to be less than five. And of course, the exact same thing would be true if three did not have a left child, but instead had a right child only. And maybe it had some children or maybe it didn't. It wouldn't matter. We would replace it with this new subtree regardless. So to summarize, a really elegant way to write this code would be if three does not have a left child, return the right child. What if the right child doesn't exist? That's okay because this is null and that's exactly what we want to return to the parent anyway. And if three does not have a right child, we return the left child because if it exists, we return it great. If it doesn't exist, we return null, which is what we would want to return anyway. So that was the first step. Now let's go on to the second step, which is a bit more tricky, I think. Now, of course, in this example, we actually do have two children for three. So what we actually have to do is replace the value we have here. We can pick a value from the left subtree or the right subtree. This is a pretty simple tree, and I can't really add additional values to four because I can't really add a one that would not make this a binary search tree but just pretend like we have some dummy value here that is valid and some dummy value here that is valid as well what we would want to do logically is pick an intelligent value from the right subtree what value could we put here such that it would satisfy this being a binary search tree. If we pick four and put four over here, it's actually not going to be a binary search tree because this value is supposed to be less than four. That's why it's the left child. But if we put four here, then X is over here. X is actually less than four, but it's on the right subtree. That's not what's supposed to happen. So when we pick a value from this right subtree, which is what I'm going to do, you could pick one from the left subtree, but I'm going to pick one from the right subtree. I'm going to pick the smallest value, aka the minimum value from the right subtree. Every value in the right subtree is greater than three, but we want to pick the smallest value because if we pick the smallest value, value, then we know that every value here is still going to be greater than the value here. Now, how do we find the smallest value from the right subtree? That's the easy part about a binary search tree. You just basically go as left as you can. You just keep going in the left direction. You keep going left until you can't go left anymore. That's the minimum value. And then you put that minimum value over here. In this case, it's going to be four. And then what you do is recursively, and this is kind of the hard part, you probably wouldn't think of by yourself, you recursively call delete node on the right subtree over here. Because remember, if we put four over here, now we have two four values. That's not what we wanted. So we have to recursively call delete node on the right subtree, passing in not three anymore. We're not trying to delete three. Now we're trying to delete four. So in that case, we will actually end up with a chain of recursive delete node calls. First, we delete the value three, and then we want to delete the value that we replaced three with. So then we want to delete four. And it's actually possible that four had a right child. Let's say it had a right child of five, even though five is already here. Let's just ignore that. But if it had a right child of five, we'd put the four over here because four is the minimum. We can't go any further to the left, but now we want to call delete node on this tree passing in four. So then we get to the four. Now we want to delete this four. So we again pick the minimum value from the right subtree, which in this case is five. We would delete this node and then we would put the five over here and then we would call delete node on this subtree, deleting the five. And then possibly we would just keep calling that recursively. But the smart thing here is that we are pretty much iterating through the height of the tree as best as we can. There are portions that we are going to have to visit twice, but if we have to visit a portion of it twice, the worst case, this would be two times H. So still the time complexity is the height of the tree. Now let's code it up. That was a long winded explanation, but the code is actually not too bad. So generally with recursive problems, we want to start with the base case. So if the root is null, then we just want to return the root. There's nothing for us to delete anyway. Otherwise, we want to find the node that we want to delete. So if the key value is greater than root.val, then we want to go to the right, which we can do like this. So self.delete node, passing in root.write, passing in the exact same key value. Else if the key value is 
less than root.val, then we want to call delete node on the left side of the tree. So on the left subtree passing in the exact same key value. Now the last case is that we actually found the node that we want to delete. So this is where we actually do the deletion. Now you might have forgotten, but remember there's actually some simple cases. Root is the node that we want to delete, but what if the left child of root is null? Then in that case, we know the new sub tree that we want to return to the parent is going to be root dot right. We don't have to do anything super fancy. And otherwise, if the right subtree is null, then we return root dot left, which actually reminds me when we call delete. Well, first of all, over here, we should call this delete node. And when we actually call these deletions, we might be deleting the left child itself. So we probably want to take this updated binary tree and assign it to root dot left. Imagine if this was the base case that executed instead of returning the root that was actually passed into this function, now we want to return root.right. So in that case, we would want to take the return value of this call and assign it to however it was called, whether it was the left child or the right child. So let's do that up above as well. Now for the slightly more complicated part. So now we want to find the minimum from the right subtree just like I showed earlier. The easiest way I think to do that is just to take the current pointer and assign it to root because we are going to still need the root and then while cur dot left, we're going to keep going down the left child. The reason I'm doing this is because we want to make sure we stop at a valid node. We don't want cur to stop at null. So by the time this is done, cur should be pointing at the minimum node in the right subtree. And remember what we want to do with that minimum value is replace the current root value with it. So we say root dot val is equal to cur dot val. And then we want to delete that value because now we have duplicates. We want to delete that from the right subtree exactly where we found it. So we say delete node on the right subtree using the value, not key. We're not using key anymore. Now we're using the root.val or you could say cur.val because they're the exact same value. I'll just do root.val. And then remember the return value of this, we should probably assign it to the right subtree still in case it ends up changing. Now remember, we're Regardless of which one of these three executes, we want to return the root node either way. You might have the first time you wrote this, uh, similar to me, you might have had you know return statements here and here as well, but then you realize you're returning the same value, so you can delete the line from here, here, and just have one outside of all three of these. Now let's run this to make sure that it works. Okay, really sorry about that. I had a couple mistakes here where we're assigning cur equal to the root. That's not what we want to do. Of course, we want to go to the right subtree, so we're going to say cur is equal to root dot right. And here, when we're iterating through the loop, we're not really doing anything. Hopefully you caught this one as I was writing it, but we want cur to be equal to cur dot left as we go down. So now let's run the code. And as you can see, it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Check out neatcode.io if you want to see code solutions for languages other than Python and for a bunch of other free resources to help you prepare for coding interviews. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.